Welcome to the Raven Space YouTube. My name is Jason, and this is a Raven Space mailbag. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. In mailbag, we answer your questions about the Baltimore Ravens. If you want your question to be answered, please send your questions to the ravenspace at gmail.com. Again, I'll put it down in the description below, and you'll also see it on the screen, the ravenspace at gmail.com. And we'll hop right in with your questions about the Baltimore Ravens. Please subscribe for more great Baltimore Ravens content. The first question we have is from Leland, and Leland asks, which rookie do you think will have the largest improvement from his rookie season to his second season? Leland, thank you so much for your question. And in my opinion, it's going to be Matthew Judon. Um, Matt Judon was a player that came on last year later in the season and showed great strides just through the regular season. Um, he was going from not even suiting up to some, in some games to eventually taking the spot from Zadarius Smith as a pass rusher. Um, he won't, you know, of course, start over Terrell Suggs, but with Elvis Dumerville leaving, there's a gap there. I think Judon will be the first person in line to fill that gap. Now, he does have a lot of competition coming from the draft, uh, but as an outside linebacker, he does have a year experience on them. He showed promise last season. Um, I believe he had two sacks for the Ravens. He is a player that I think will improve and become consistently good. Um, last year, he had some on days, some off games, um, but in the red zone, he made plays. He will make plays consistently now throughout the year. Um, and now I know a little, a little bit of you guys are saying, Jason, what about Tavon Young? Tavon Young is already a very good player. And the question asks largest improvement. So when I say largest improvement, I meant, you know, Tavon Young is already good. He'll be better. But I think that Matt Judon has a ability to go from, you know, okay, decent to good and even starting. And that's something that the Ravens really need. And Matt Judon has the opportunity to make it happen. Um, he just has to work on his motor a little bit. There's some times where, you know, late in games, he disappears. Um, in the Jets game, I believe he had a sack very early in the game. And then it, it felt like he just, you know, left the field. So he'll work on his motor. But I really do think that he has a chance to improve, be a starter, and be a good player for the Baltimore Ravens. Leland, thank you so much for your question. Um, and we'll move on to the next one. The next question is from Devin, um, and Devin asks, what are the best and worst case scenarios for the Ravens regular season record? Um, thank you so much for your question, Devin. If you guys uh, don't know, Devin was on the live stream for the Baltimore Ravens first round uh, draft that we did. And so, you know, thank you so much, Devin, for being there. Thank you so much for your question, and we'll hop in. Um, in my very, very honest opinion, the best case scenario for the Ravens is 11 and 5. And I say 11 and 5, because I don't think our offense is good enough to compete for the first two spots. But if our defense plays great and Joe Flacco plays great in clutch situations, we can win some games. The scores will be low because how good our defense is. And if Joe can get us over two touchdowns a game, um, through, you know, 21 points a game, um, you know, we'll be fine. Between that 14 and 21 point game is where we need to be. Um, of course, we'll get some field goals from Tucker. So it's, you know, we might get 17 one game. But our defense is the type of defense that should be able to hold teams under 21 points. And if that happens consistently, uh, we can get to an 11 to five record. The worst case scenario is not that bad, right? I think seven and nine is the worst case scenario that the Ravens can go. Um, and our defense is too good to be terrible. Our quarterback is too good to be terrible. Now we have issues with our receivers, our offensive line, I think our running backs and our running scheme, but Last year, we had those same issues, and we still were able to finish 8-8. Eight and eight. I think our worst case scenario is 7-9. Our defense is too good. The worst teams in the league are bad on offense and defense, like the Browns, the Bears, the 49ers. We don't have that problem. Um, no team, you know, holds their opponents under 21 points consistently and, you know, loses 10, you know, 12 games. Um to be a consistent loser, you need to let your offense that you're playing get 35 points on you, right? So we are going to be just fine. Um, we have a, like they say, we have a high ceiling right now and a high floor. So we don't know where we're going to go, you know, how good we can be. But we do know that our defense always gives us a chance to be in games. So, Devin, thank you so much for your question. 
and we'll go on to the next one. And the next question comes from Kurt and Kurt asks, who do you think is the most likely to break out in their third year in the league? Is it Darius Smith, Carl Davis, or Max Williams? So in my opinion, um, in this question, it's Max Williams. And there's a lot of reasons. Um, one, it's not necessarily that I think is that Max Williams is so much better than these other two players, but the way that the Ravens are starting, make, but the way that the Ravens are starting to make decisions, it makes me feel like they have an idea about Zadarius Smith and Carl Davis. Um, and for example, if you even look at this draft, you saw that the Ravens drafted two outside linebackers. That's not good for Zadarius Smith. Um, especially since Zaria Smith already got his job taken last season by Matt Judon. So that makes me a little nervous. Carl Davis uh, seems like the all man out because, again, the Ravens were drafting uh, defensive linemen, and we know that, of course, they like players like Michael Pierce. Um, of course, they gave Brian Williams a long-time deal. So Carl Davis is the only guy in that you know mix that should be worried a little bit. And, of course, he didn't get a lot of playing time either. So those two players are kind of in, you know, iffy situations. Now, Max Williams is in a crowded tight end group. However, I think of that tight end group, he might be one of the best uh, players there. Uh, Dennis Pell, of course, is the best. Um, and you have Crockett Gilmore, who's so inconsistent. Max Williams, when he's on the field, provides a pass catching alternative to Joe Flacco. So hopefully, I think he'll be able to separate himself from these other two players. Um, and again, I like Carl Davis. Um, he doesn't really make a, a big impact. And Zardari Zardarius Smith is a little, I don't want to say lazy, but, you know, sometimes he just disappears from games, which isn't good, especially since, you know, he has so much potential. So hopefully he comes around as well. But in my opinion, out of these three, Max Williams is the answer. Um, let me know who you think it will be in the comments below. I really would like to know. And in this question from Danny, Danny asks, Jason, in your opinion, who was the most disappointing player of the 2016 season? And this question was easy for me, Danny. Um, it has to be Sharice Wright. Uh, Sharice was supposed to step in um, with Jimmy Smith and provide two shutdown corners uh, who were able to you know, control the flow of the game. And Sharice just disappeared. And the worst thing is that how great he started out. Um, if you remember, in the game against the Buffalo Bills, there were a couple of plays that Sharice Wright made, which made me think, whoa, this guy is looking better than Jimmy Smith is right now. Um, I believe he made two tackles on the edge, um, you know, coming down, had a couple of deflections. And he had, like, the best game of his career. And then after that, he just dropped off and disappeared, which was disappointing. Um, again, as you guys know, he got beat out uh, by Tavon Young for the other edge uh, defender corner and then just disappeared from the team as Powers was playing the slot. And then after Jimmy got injured, he got back in, and that was when the defense was the worst, when he was in there uh, being burnt by receivers left and right. So he was super disappointing to me. Um, he disappointed the Ravens too, because, you know, they let him go in the middle of his contract. So it's, you know, he just had a, a bad season. Um, he, I don't think he'll be productive in the league. You know, how some players leave and get better. I don't think he's one of those players. He has a limited skill set. Um, and, you know, when he's playing with momentum, he's his best. But momentum can't hold up throughout the entire season. You have to also have the skills and the physical ability to make that happen as well. So Sharish Wright was my my most disappointing player of 2016. And that was all the questions I have for you guys today. Again, remember, if you want your question answered, please, please, please send it to theravenspace at gmail.com. I will answer your questions, every single one that you guys send in. Um, if I can't answer on the show, I will shoot you an email answering it for you there. Um, I really do want to uh, speak to you guys and provide you guys with great content, in my opinion, on the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, again, Please send us your questions. I'll put it in the description below. If you enjoyed this episode, please comment below. Uh, subscribe to the Raven Space channel. And again, thank you guys so much and go Ravens.